a woman does it, that's cooperative. That's submissive. That means she's trusting your husband's judgment. Now, it's very interesting, too, because you get sometimes it's pushback. All right, there's pushback for women who don't understand it, even women who are bitter, women who are combative, women who just don't know and think, hey, everything got to be explained to me and all that. But then at the same time, a lot of these women, hey, everything got to be explained to, also don't want to be treated like children. Stone Lady Peace, the coach and idea with the founders of Outstanding Personal Relationships and co-author of Let's Talk Religion Uncensored. I came across something that I would consider um, is a secret sauce of a very fulfilling and joyful marriage. And one of these things has been categorized and termed a lot of different things over the years, right? You've heard maybe it's called submission or submissive wife, for example, or cooperation. All right, somebody you know, who plays team. So let me give you what I'm talking about just to really, uh, one, advise the sisters on if you really want to have a happier, healthier marriage, do you understand the power and the significance, but most importantly, the attraction of something like this? So a brother made a post, good brother, pretty respectful, so you know, random thought. Sometimes the husband doesn't have the time or can't explain at the moment the reason why he told you, meaning the wife, to do what he told you to do or not do. Not knowing or not understanding does not remove the obligation from you. If it's not haram, prohibited, or harmful, then follow through. So basically, husband saying, listen, do this or don't do this. There's no time for discussion and everything stuff at this time. Maybe later, maybe not later at all. But as long as it's not prohibited and it's not harmful, I expect you to do it. Now, that right here, when a woman does it, that's cooperative. That's submissive. That means she's trusting her husband's judgment. Now, it's very interesting, too, because you get sometimes it's pushback. All right, there's pushback for women who don't understand it, even women who are bitter, women who are combative, women who just don't know and think, hey, everything got to be explained to me and all that. But then at the same time, a lot of these women that everything got to be explained to also don't want to be treated like children. All right, so I'm telling you something because I'm, it's my responsibility as the man, as the husband, all right, as the leader of the family to protect to provide these things, and I know I have information that something may be harmful, so I'm trying to protect my family, or something may be better for the family, I may not have time, nor do I want to have to go into detail to explain why I make every single decision. See, I have that responsibility on my shoulders as the man. You have it on your back and your shoulders and everything else when you practice religion, you're married to more than one woman. But let me ask you, sisters, um, did you get married in order to run your husband or your man? Or are you supportive of him? That doesn't mean um, he tells you to do something that there's not some consultation and things that go on amongst other things. See, but when there are challenges, when there are things that go up, it's our responsibility to make a split second decision. We expect follow through, cooperativeness. We expect that if we have been making good decisions and leading the family in the direction that we want to go, that there's no question. All right, let me give you an example. This footage is of a robbery that I, where I shot a guy who was trying to rob a place, which you're looking in the top left. It's Coach Nyla and I just moving out of the way fast. I, she didn't see it. She was facing me. And let's take a look from another angle. We're in line. I see the guy coming in, start backing up, let her know to come on, let's go, let's move. She didn't know what was going on, so she was trying to figure it out. And I let her know, pretty much go back in the aisle, get safe. I unholstered my firearm, uh, came back toward the front as the guy was shouting orders and people were screaming, and especially this... Uh, pregnant um, cashier and everything that was working there and and so on. Long story short, I was the first case in the state that I reside in to uh, utilize my carry concealed license and weapon to foil an armed robbery at the time. The point is she listened. She didn't question it. We got out of the way of harm immediately. And this may be an extreme example, but it's real. There was no blowback. She obeyed it. It wasn't an issue. Now, I know I said the word obeyed. <laughs> Buzzword, red word, this whole time of feminism and all this uh, so under the guise of women's empowerment, right? It's funny because 
in scriptural marriage, whether you're talking about uh, Jewish or Hebrew or Christian marriage or even Islam, you have that word obey that is said during the wedding vows and the wedding ceremony for those who do it from that perspective or Islamically. Um, it also speaks of obeying your husband, okay? Of course, in righteousness and stuff like that, not in something that's evil or wrong. But that obedience to that, that obeying is something that is extremely attractive. Now, I've already said it's in good. It's not in bad. It's not in something prohibited. So I don't need to go there. But I'm going to ask the women who have a problem with that, what is your problem? Don't you know that that's something attractive? Are you married to a man or want to marry a man that you can run? Some women like that. If so, that's cool. You can disregard this whole thing, but you probably got all kind of negative stuff to say in it anyway. But I'm talking to those who actually want to build a fulfilling marriage or find something attractive that's working with your husband, with your man. So not only is it attractive, but it also allows you to have influence too. Because if you are someone who recognizes and respects your husband and you obey him on good things and everything else, when you are consulting and you understand his leadership and going in the right direction, if something may seem off, you may have intuition. That can be more likely heard than somebody who wants to come back or conflict and just go against every single thing that's said. That's not attractive. I am Coach Nadir. And I'm Coach Fatima, his wife. And I am Coach Nyla. I am also his wife. We are the founders of Outstanding Personal Relationships, as well as the authors of the book, Let's, Let's Talk Polygamy, Polygamy Uncensored. Uncensored. And I'm sure you're asking yourself, how can you get your hands on a copy of it right now? The great part is, we're about to share that with you. But first, let me tell you about why you need to at least get your hands on one or maybe more copies, depending on where you are in your polygynous journey. Some of the things that we discuss in our book is, are issues about trust, insecurities, jealousy among wives, and maybe even, possibly even, creating lasting friendships. Especially friendships amongst co-wives. And we share in this book how you can understand that it takes a village, that polygyny is not some taboo topic or something that's gonna leave women stranded alone and kids not loving each other or feel like they're left alone by their fathers or from their fathers or whatever the case may be. You will learn so much in this book. Let's talk polygamy uncensored. Indeed, we lay down the practical steps that we wish we would have had when we started our polygyny journey over 13 years ago. Well, the time is here and all you have to do, go to letstalkpolygamy.com. Order a copy, order the bundle, do whatever it is you need to do so there's no more excuses and we make it marriage great again by reminding people of polygamy, which is an ancient solution to, to a modern day problem. problem. <laughs> Let's talk polygamy.com, get your pre-sale order on. With that being said, make yes. sure you are growing intentionally, loving fearlessly, and connecting on a higher level every, every single day. day. <laughs> Visit the link. Salam alaikum. Peace. Peace. So when someone talks about um, mad woman syndrome or always got something to say, even had a last word, all kind of stuff, because even in the brother posted this, you ask somebody in the comments, well, you know, the wife deserves to get an explanation on what you tell her to do when it's a command and blah, blah, blah. Not in every single circumstance. No. But it's up to that leader. It's up to the man. It's up to that man of the family to lead the family. Sometimes it may require an explanation. But maybe at a later time. Maybe there's some discussion that can come from it. Maybe it doesn't require an explanation at all. Or maybe there's information that's omitted for safety of the family because it's not going to change one way or other the person's perception and knowledge of that circumstance will not change the situation whatsoever. And that's for me as the man, as the husband, to make a decision on. But if you want a better, happy, fulfilling relationship, ladies, then... Obey your husbands in good. Don't combat them. Don't fight. Be cooperative. Not something hard to do. But in today's time, it seems like it's one of the most challenging. And if it's the, of the most challenging, don't, don't wait until something bad happens. Or now you say you're no longer married anymore. And you wonder what the hell the problem is in the marriage. It's the hell that you're raising on simple things. This isn't something about, you know, what you want to cook for dinner and cook some rice and blah, blah, blah. Well, you know, that's not wrong or harmful, so I need, I need to go ahead and do it. That's not, nah, nah, we're talking about serious matters. Okay? Because with men, one, you need to make good decisions. You don't need to micromanage either as men. 
So it's our responsibilities to lead and demonstrate a pattern of good leadership. So a sister had asked the question, my husband wants to practice religion. So I'm asking him, okay, how's this going to look? How's it going to work? And all this type of stuff. And he's like, you know what? I don't really know. Just trust me. Well, that really doesn't provide any type of security and comfort and everything else and how it goes, right? So we got to do better than just trust me. You don't know? That's cool. You can be honest about that. That's fine. But let's figure that thing out together because she's going to need some reassurance along that path if that's the path you choose to go. We can't expect somebody to just follow blindly on something that's going to pack it live. They're trying to, you know, have some discussion and communication on it. So there's a balance here. But like the brother was saying, whether or not you know something, we discuss it or anything else. And I'm saying this, do this by you doing that and being cooperative, being submissive to it makes you that much more attractive to me. If you got a question, you be flipping about it and everything, that's unattractive. And I remember uh, some of you may know him, may not necessarily listen to his music back in the day, but uh, Willie D, because he has a podcast and stuff like that, one of the uh, original members of Ghetto Boys. And he had a solo album, right? Well, a couple of them, but on one of those solo albums by the same title of his name, I remember some lyrics he, he put out. He said, you know, I'd rather have an ugly chick than a hard head, fine Pretty, because you ain't down, want me to climb. All right, it's extremely unattractive to have a bad attitude, even if you look beautiful, even if you look physically attractive. So if you want to increase your attractiveness, attractiveness level, why not try being more cooperative? And that also, like I said, will help you gain more influence, more respect, and a more joyful and fulfilling relationship. So hopefully that helps somebody out there. That's one of the secret sources in marriage. Sometimes it may take a while to really get to that point. But that increases love and respect. You want to get to a man's heart? Stop fighting him at every single thing. Stop fighting him at most things. Stop fighting him at a lot of things. If you need to fight and lead and all that, and you need to be the man, you may not be compatible in that relationship. And brothers... If you got problems with your decision making, need to up your intelligence quotient in leadership, in good decision making, taking good counsel, finding mentors, finding good coaches, getting that information to help you think better and lead better. So with that being said, we could all start being ignorant at first, but to stay there is only because of a person's stupidity. The goal is to become intelligent over time and make those good decisions. With that being said, I'm out. Just want to drop that on you and um, share what you think in the comments about it. You know, one way or the other. <laughs> so with that, remember, I'm coach not here. I'm the one that helps. People. I'm the coach that helps people get their shift together. And remember, GLC, grow intentionally, love, fearlessly, and connect at a high level every single day. More about us at OutstandingPersonalRelationship.com. Slow later. Peace.